Oh, I got something. <laughs> Look at him running. Look how clear that water is. Another shell cracker. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a syringe to help you catch shell crackers in the summertime. All right, guys, let's talk about why you may need a syringe in your tackle box. So today, it was about 80 degrees at daylight. It's really hot. It's going to get 95 plus degrees today. It's the middle of June. It's the heat of summer. The bluegill and the shell crackers have already spawned. They're moving out into this deeper water. You'll see them surfacing early in the morning, eating the bugs that have landed on the water through the night. So what I've decided to do today, I've got a little split shot right here. In between a foot and 18 inches, I've got just a little brim hook and night crawlers. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this syringe, I'm filling it full of air, and I'm injecting it into this worm. And now the reason for that is if you'll remember my last video when I was catching the shell crackers on the beds, a night crawler by itself is naturally going to sink straight to the bottom. And when they're in the beds, that's exactly what you want. You want the night crawler in the bed so that they do that defensive mode, whatever, where they're trying to protect their bed and they're trying to rip that worm out of there. But in the summertime, you're on a feeding pattern. You're trying to put food in front of their face to trigger them to bite. So shell crackers tend to go out a little bit deeper than bluegill. They tend to be structure oriented more so than bluegill. Bluegill will be all over the place. At least for today's purposes, the shell crackers seem to be oriented to large clusters of trees. The air, what the air in the worm is going to do is it's going to allow that worm to suspend off the bottom. And a lot of times the weight of that hook, I'm using the smallest hook I can get, but the weight of that hook will sink part of the worm to the bottom and then the top part of the worm will float up because it's full of air so it keeps it off the bottom so that the fish can see it anyway so today's scenario this lake is full of grass there's a huge grass mat under the water in some cases it's two foot under the water some cases it's 15 foot under water my weight is hitting the grass mat and stopping Sometimes it's going through, but most of the time it's stopping on the top of the grass mat. So my worm is dangling above it. So any of the fish that are cruising, my worm is right in their face because it's got that little pocket of air in there. It's keeping it afloat. Um, but that's ultimately what I'm doing, guys. I'm trying to get my worm off the bottom or off the top of the grass. And I'm catching, I've caught tons of shell crackers today. I've caught tons of bluegill. The shell crackers are in a little bit deeper water. The bluegills are a little bit closer to the bank. So the outermost cover is what I'm fishing to try to target these shell crackers. I'm here to catch shell crackers. And so when I catch bluegill, I back off and I go and I, and I get a little bit deeper water. But that's what I'm doing. Let's get with it. All right, guys, what I'm doing with this syringe is I'm pulling the plunger back getting it full of air and then I'm injecting that air into the night crawler and so what that's going to do you can see this kind of end of the worm is inflated a little and what that does is my I've got like a little 1 16th ounce weight on here and that weight will make the worm sink but the air will keep the worm from floating or from sinking all the way to the bottom it'll float up just a little bit to keep it off the bottom or keep it off of whatever structures down there and I'm home now I got a fish Ooh, I got a decent sized fish too got a shell cracker And that's how it's done right there, folks. So the first fish of the day is a shell cracker. Not an overly big one, but the method is working. It's 
So injecting your worm with air, it doesn't just let it set off the bottom, it causes it to sink really slowly. So if you've got fish that are suspended, it's going to keep it in their face longer on the way down. It's going to cause that worm to just barely creep to the bottom. And if there's fish sitting mid-column, it's going to go past them really slowly and they're going to have a chance to look at it, tell what it is, and, and bite it. The slower you go past the fish, the better. This technique doesn't just catch bluegill and shellcrackers. It'll catch bass, it can catch crappie, it can catch uh, catfish. I've caught a lot of catfish doing this, actually. Oop, I got something. Some bluegill. All right. Very sick looking bluegill. But a bluegill just the same. So we got one shell cracker, one bluegill. Oop. Oh, I got him. He was hung up in some stuff. Nice bluegill. Oop. Catch and release. Oh, I got him. Ooh, this is a good fish. No, he's not. He was just running hard. Oh, just a little bitty bluegill. Look at that. That's catfish bait right there. How to keep him from catfish bait. Oh, I got another bluegill. Not a very big one. These little birds are nested in this little tree and got some babies in there. That looks like a fish has got it right there. Yep, he does. <laughs> it seems like the smaller the fish, the more they run off, where the big ones just kind of inhale it and sit still. I got him. Good fish, too. Good show cracker. See, this is that grass bed I'm fishing, this stuff. That's a pretty good fish. That's what I was trying to get is shell crackers. I want a lot of air in this guy. He's on it. Yep, I got him. <laughs> so I was trying to tell you, you rarely ever catch just one shell cracker. Ooh, he's trying to fend me. Look at him. It's not a very big one, but that's a shell cracker. There's definitely fish down in there. There's been two down in there and I haven't landed either one of them. There he was, he got it right there at the top. He chased it. I'm gonna let him go for a minute. Got him. Oh, it's a bass. <laughs> Ooh. 
And he came off. There he is, I got him. He's home or something. Another shell cracker. Fish, but it got me hung up. <laughs> Pretty bluegill. Not a very big one. There he is. He just took it then. Got him. He went down in the grass. Little bluegill. Oop, got him. Ooh. What is this? A good shell cracker. Look at that pretty guy. Another shell cracker. Alright guys, let's take a second to look at the cover here. You'll see there's three big tree stumps here, a tree stump here, a double tree stump there, and some more back there. These tight pits of cover like this are where I'm catching the shell crackers. They're in the big pile of trees. I'm fishing down this bank, fishing the outermost trees to catch the shell crackers. If I get further into the sh more shallow stumps, I'm getting bluegill. All the shell crackers are out on the outermost edge. Oh, I got one. It's a large one. So this will show you you can catch anything on these worms. Yep, I got him. See, this is what I was talking about. That's a nice show cracker. You see, I just caught this show cracker. This boat just fished down through there, and they already left because they weren't catching any good fish. They were catch catching all small bluegill on crickets with corks. And the main reason why they weren't catching these is because they weren't fishing deep enough. something a little a little shell cracker yep a little shell cracker right in the center of the cove all right guys that's going to wrap up today's video 
I hope you kind of learned something new. That's kind of a little neat trick we used to use trout fishing. Um, it's 95 degrees or 94 degrees is what it read on my truck dash. And it is 9.45 in the morning. So the lesson learned is get on the water as early as humanly possible because you're going to get off before 10 because it's just, it's just too hot to be out there to fish. So anyways, I hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see you back here later in the week.